Okay, so we got one more one more score needed in order to win the match. And what better way to do that than the Evans Gambit? It was the Lawrence Trent Gambit, Trent Gambit the last time. This time the Evans Gambit, so let me see. He's thinking a bit, so apparently E5 was a plan B, but it did feel as though he was getting really, really bad positions in the night arf, so he needed to do something quite different. Don't know why he's thinking so long. I think when you go for bishop e7, you're supposed to go knight a5 here. Who knows, huh? So I'm gonna go knight bishop e2. Oh, d5, huh? That's interesting. Because I'm gonna go queen a4. Don't want to think for too long. This looks very nice, though. C2 and I take back on e4 and he has got a real problem with his knight on g8. Okay, it develops. I'm simply gonna take it. Knight bd2, I guess. I feel like I'm just better here. He does have some potential options along the open g file, but I feel that. His weakened king is a much bigger factor. Queen c7, I'm just going to go i4. Knight a4. c5. I think he's pretty tilted at this point. c5 doesn't make any sense. I can just take b5, I can take e6. Whatever, yeah. Knight d6, he cannot take because of knight f6 and queen e7 knight. And he goes f5, which I hadn't seen. Yeah, that's a bit of a bummer. Okay, let me go knight g3. Bishop f3. I think I typically when you have a good position, you very often lock out, look out and find solutions even when you're blundered. In here, clearly. Even though I blundered, I'm completely fine. Rook f6. No need to worry about the fork on e3. This is going to be game over very, very soon. Yeah, because just queen b3 is also an option. Yeah, let's keep it simple. Queen e2. Takes, takes. Knight d6. I go rook d1. Looks really, really painful for him. Queen e7 now. And I think that's going to be the end of the match. Takes, takes, I got rook d6 next, and that's all over.